I got the idea from a sermon in church one Sunday the reverend said the dinner table each evening should have all the elements of a service a spiritual family feast whereby each one could share his day and his love with one another Whoosh. wasn't that wonderful mom goes to tell the sponge out of the holy water font <coughs> I'm telling you know when we were supposed to shake hands in a sign of peace guess you pressed a dirty nose tissue into my hand and then wouldn't take it back one of you kids doesn't stop kicking the back of my seat. Oh, I'm going to clean the car. Will you knock it off? Didn't anyone hear the sermon? Uh, yeah, it was something about uh, sharing pizza. It was not about sharing pizza. It was about sharing your spiritual love at a family feast. Same thing. Do you know when was the last time this family ate a meal together? It was four years ago at Grandma's birthday. I remember I did the dishes that night. You did not. I did them because I remember we had lasagna that stuck to the pan and I had to soak it. Yeah, for three weeks. Well, I'm not like some people who put a giant bowl in the refrigerator with a peach pit in it. Only because we eat everything at sight, including the pits. Look, we're long overdue. Tomorrow night, this entire family is going to sit down together and eat a meal. Only a certificate of death A recent one will be acceptable for a no-show. I was going to practice cheers with Linda and then go to the library. You know I have practice until 7. It seems to me that I have a 5 o'clock dental appointment and traffic on the expressway is murder. Maybe Tuesday would be a better day. Dinner on Monday together. I am the youngest of four children in my family. If your house is anything like mine, dinner time can be pretty chaotic. But since I'm the youngest, I could just sit back and watch it all unfold because trying to get a word in edgewise is like talking to someone in the dead of a hurricane. In Starving to Death at the Spiritual Family Feast, Irma Tom Bombeck talks about her own personal experience with family dinners. Everything goes wrong. The children want to be there. The children don't want to be there, the mother wants to be there, and the dad is giving lectures that no one wants to listen to. This is Starving to Death at the Spiritual Family Feast by Irma Bombeck. Whoosh. At 6 p.m. the scene was set for the great spiritual banquet. It held all the giddiness of the Last Supper. Well, now that we are all together, each one of us should think about sharing our day with one another. That should be an enriching experience. Do you know what Ramsey Phillips said were the seven words you can't use on TV? Not that enriched. Dear, what would you like to talk about? Now, that was a mistake. Over the years, my husband has composed and committed to memory five standard dinner table lectures that are as familiar to us as the Pledge of Allegiance. They include, one, why don't you want your father to have a front lawn? Two minutes and 48 seconds. This is a real heart tugger in which dad recaps his failure to triumph over bikes, sleds, plastic pools, football games, dogs, cars, wagons, and all the little perverts who cut across his lawn just to make him paranoid. When his eyes begin to mist, he is ready to go for options. Donate the yard to the government for nuclear testing. Put a sentry at the driveway with a loaded rifle. And perhaps, and this is drastic, have the children take an interest in mowing, fertilizing, and trimming the yard so they can appreciate what he is trying to do. His anger is, my compost is in your hands. Two, do I look like a man who owns the waterworks? Two minutes. This is a table favorite brought on when dad is overcome by steam and requires oxygen to enter the bathroom. In his mind, he is convinced he cannot afford the child who's trying to break into the Guinness Book of World Records for using 40 gallons of hot water to wash off a 96 pound body. Three, Captain Quag and the ice cubes. The children can always tell when daddy is going for the ice cube number. He appears at the table with two steel balls in his hands and for five minutes does nothing but rotate them. Then, he relates with a slight smile how he was captured the culprit who put the ice cube tray in the freezer. Empty. 
When he made his drink, there were nine ice cubes in the tray. By crouching unnoticed in the broom closet, he noted four of them were used by our daughter to make a malt, three were used by me to make my glass of iced tea, and one was used by our son, and he was the culprit. When the younger son protested that there is still one left, his father's face lit up and said, Wrong! You dropped one on the ground because I slipped on it and nearly broke my back. The entire table is left to meditate on the consequences. Four. I'm paying you kids an allowance to breathe. Three minutes. This is a fun presentation because it's a group participation lecture. Do you know how much money I made when I was your age? Five cents a month, they yell in unison. Five cents a month. And do you know how old I was when I bought my first car? Twenty-three years old. Twenty-three years old. And do you know how much I had to buy with just five cents a month? You had to buy all your own books, clothes, tuition, medical expenses, rent, and pay for your entertainment. I had to buy all my own books, clothes, tuition, medical expenses, rent, and pay for my entertainment. And can you imagine what I did for entertainment? Changed your underwear? Don't add lib. Five. I don't want to talk about it. 30 minutes long. This is the lecture we have all come to dread. It's the I don't want to talk about it lecture he talks about all during dinner. Dad appears at the table, morose, depressed, preoccupied, picking out his food, a picture of utter despair. If it's about the duck in the utility room, I don't want to talk about it. I'm going to empty all the garbage on the back porch tonight. Forget it. Hey, just because your shorts came out pink doesn't mean we could wash them and put a little bleach. Just forget it. By the end of the dinner hour, we have all confessed to every crime to date, and he is still sullen. Finally, in desperation, I say, if it's about the dents in the car, that's what I want to talk about. This Monday evening, however, my husband surprised us all by introducing a new lecture. It was called, by gosh, we're going to be a close-knit family if I have to chain you to the bed. Well, it certainly is wonderful sitting down together for a change. Is that it? Can I go now? No, stay put. I am your father. We thought you were taller. I'm sorry if I haven't seen as much of you as I would have liked. It isn't easy commuting to and from the city every day. Now, we're going to go around the table and each one of you could tell me something about yourself. I'm the middle child. I'm the token girl in the family. I like birthday cards with money in them bathroom doors that can't be unlocked by releasing it with the pin, and I want to be a professional cheerleader when I grow up. Can I go or does it have to be longer? Stay put. Next. I'm the middle child in the family. I'm bored, depressed, neurotic, unfulfilled, subject to pressures which will eventually drive me to my own apartment. Hey, don't I get to say anything again? Do you realize that because I'm the youngest of this family, I never get to open my mouth? I've been trying to tell a joke at this table for the last three years. The boys right? take those wires out of your ears and tell us your joke. Well, there's the stutter. I've heard it. How do you know you've heard it? There are a lot of guys who stutter. I happen to know that of all the guys who stutter, only one of them made a joke out of it. Well, this guy from the north said to this guy from the south, Mom, don't let him tell it. It's sick. Well, if you heard it before, you should have stopped me. It's not my turn to do the dishes. When was our last spiritual family feast we shared together? It was four years ago at Grandma's birthday. <sighs> Time flies when you're healing. <laughs>